Many people ask me what I use as my painting surface and how I prepare it. So I'm going to share with you exactly what I do for nearly all of my paintings. I typically paint on masonite or cradled birch panels due to the convenience. First, I purchase 1 8 inch or a quarter inch masonite panels from my local lumber store. They come in four foot by eight foot sheets. And I typically have the workers at the lumber yard cut them down for me in thirds or in half, depending on what sizes of paintings I have planned. At times, I've even had them cut down the sheets into specific dimensions for me when I didn't have the convenience of my own table saw at home. Now that I have a table saw, I make additional cuts myself for the sake of precision. Once I have my panels cut down to the dimensions I want, I take my orbital sander and I sand down one side of the panels. I don't use anything more abrasive than 150 grit sandpaper. The reason I'm sanding in the first place is to rough up the ultra smooth and glossy surface of the masonite from the side that I plan to apply the acrylic gesso or primer to. Now, the purpose of gessoing or priming panels is for the sake of creating a surface that is archival. I want my paintings to last as long as possible, even hundreds of years, potentially. And because the oils in oil paint, when painted directly onto any surface, will react negatively with that surface, whether it's wood, masonite, linen, or canvas, the oils will cause those substrates to deteriorate over time, which means the artwork will not be able to last for as long as you would hope. So, once the panels are sanded down, I then apply a thin coat of gesso with a large brush, varying the direction of my strokes so that I make the surface interesting. Now, I personally use Liquitex Professional Gesso, the one with a large S and a circle on it. It also reads on the label that it is used for surface preparation. This is my favorite gesso to use because it doesn't absorb the oils in my oil paint, like most of the acrylic gessos that I've used. Most of those acrylic gessos that I've used in the past absorb a lot of the oils out of my oil paint, and it leaves the paint looking dry, chalky, and matted. I use this one because it's the only one that I've found that does not do that. I love it. There are oil-based primers you can use, but the drying and curing process takes days rather than the minutes that this acrylic gesso takes. So after applying the first layer of gesso, I then allow the layer to dry or I use a hairdryer to speed up the process. And then I repeat the process, continuing to vary the direction of my strokes to continue to add variety to the surface. Now, my goal is not to create heavy texture with my gesso. I just want a visually stimulating surface to paint on. Once I have the surface covered to my satisfaction, usually it takes three thin coats of gesso, and once it's dry and hardened, I then get a fine grit sandpaper, usually 220 grit, so that I don't put gouge marks in the gesso, and I sand down the entire surface to remove any heavy texture. On a side note, when you're sanding the gesso to remove the heavy texture, if the gesso is not coming off in a fine powdery dust, but it is coming off in little pellets or beads, or if it's building up and covering portions of your sandpaper, then the gesso is not dry enough and you should probably wait a little longer to sand. If that's the case, I usually use my hairdryer to speed up the process. If you decide to use a heat gun as opposed to a hairdryer, be extremely careful that you don't get too close to the surface of the gesso and heat it up too much because it can actually burn the gesso and make it bubble up. And then you have to touch up and spend more of your valuable time fixing it. Once the surface is dry and the heavy texture is sanded down, I then use an acrylic mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and rub it onto my panel with a wet rag. This puts a thin neutral brown tone onto the surface and it really accentuates the surface quality as the tone is darker in the shallow grooves and valleys of the gesso, making the surface appear active and interesting even though the surface is really quite smooth. Getting your surface to look like this will probably take a few tries and a little finesse. One thing I have noticed is that if I get my rag wet to the point that it is almost dripping and put a good amount of paint onto the rag, I am able to cover a lot of area quickly rather than taking a longer time covering small portions at a time. In the end, you'll have to play around with it and come up with a tone that you are happy with. The biggest reason that I want to tone my surface is to get rid of the bright white value. I want the surface to be a few steps darker so that when I begin to paint on the surface, my colors and values read more accurately. When you paint directly onto a bright white surface, it can be difficult to read the values correctly and make it harder to make a successful painting. 
Once I'm happy with the tone and the surface is dry, it may take a while to get fully dry due to adding the tone with a wet rag. I am then ready to start my drawing or sketch in preparation for painting. I hope this video and description has been helpful to you. This has been the process that I have used for years and I found it to be very effective. Thanks for watching.